Painting your walls is one of the most budget-friendly ways that you can upgrade your home that makes a huge impact. But what's the best way for choosing paint colors for your interior? I'm gonna share some tips and tricks with you as well as some common mistakes that I see. I've been a DIYer and home stylist for almost 15 years now. My husband and I have done a couple cabin renovations. We've built our own place. We've done some room stylings for clients and I have learned a lot about paint. I've made my own mistakes. So I'm hoping that you will learn from my mistakes when you're picking colors for your own home. Interior paint mistake number one is you have not determined the mood that you want to set in your space. And I have learned that planning is everything when it comes to doing a room makeover or a whole home renovation. And determining that mood that you wanna create will help you pick the perfect color for your space. And if you don't plan the mood of your room in advance, you're more than likely to create a space that feels a little bit disjointed and uncoordinated. One easy way that I like to create a mood for my space is to browse Pinterest and pin all of the images that I love. So if I'm making over a living room, I will just type in living room in the search bar and start saving all of the living room photos that are really speaking to me. After you save all of these photos in a Pinterest board, you should be able to go to that board and see if there's common elements amongst all of the photos that you've saved. You should start to see a pattern from photo to photo, and this will help you develop the mood that you wanna create in your space. And if you need help naming the style that you're discovering that you have, if you kind of have all these images pinned, all of these elements, go to my blog, thediymommy.com. I have a home styles quiz, it's two minutes long, and it'll help you kind of name and pinpoint the style that you love. Wall color is huge when setting the mood of your space. And I have definitely learned that the psychology of color and specifically the color of your walls plays a huge part in how you feel when you're in that space. So some feelings that colors can add, red is a very passionate, very vibrant color. It's great for a more modern feeling room or a room that you wanna feel energized in. Orange feels optimistic and youthful, so this might be a good pick for a children's space. Green makes us think of nature, makes us think of health and growth, and I love greens for pretty much any room in the home. Browns and even warm grays can feel cozy, natural, and soothing. Blue usually feels very confident and secure. It's a very safe color to use in most spaces in your home as well. Purple can kind of be mysterious. It can also feel very royal. This is fun for a kid's space. It's also fun in a deeper tone for a formal space like a dining room. Pink is very feminine and very calm feeling. It's also very optimistic feeling when you want to create a softer mood. I really like using pinks in bedroom spaces. The color white represents purity. It also creates the illusion of more space. You know that I love white paint colors, especially since I've overhauled lots of small spaces. So choose this color if you want to make a small room feel larger or if you want just a blank slate to add colors through accessories into your home. Black is a very powerful color. It also feels so elegant. We've seen a lot of people use black paint on interior walls over the last five years or so. I prefer to use it in smaller doses when working with smaller spaces because it can make a room feel smaller. So once you've determined the mood and the style of the space you want to create, that's going to help you pick one of these colors and then you can narrow down it within that color family what color you want to choose from there. I always default to shades of white, blue, and green because I feel like those colors are rather timeless. They create a good mood, secure, soft, and I've used those colors for, I mean, over 20 years in my interior spaces and I still love them to this day. Interior paint mistake number two is you are choosing the paint color based on the paint chip alone, especially the paint chip in the store. <laughs> I admit I've done this before on a time crunch and it's worked sometimes, but then other times it hasn't worked. So I just don't recommend it as a no fail way to choose a color for your interior walls. So why does this usually not work? There's a couple of different reasons. First reason is the paint is gonna look a lot different on a larger area. So the paint chip is only this big, your wall is this big, that amount of color is just gonna look so much different. It's probably gonna look darker, it's probably gonna look brighter if it's a bright color and more saturated. The second reason it's gonna look different is the lighting in the store, whether you're in Home Depot, Benjamin Moore, whatever, is completely different than the lighting in your own space. It's gonna be probably some sort of bright, really warm toned light bulb in the store and then at home, 
you have your natural light. The way that different sources of light bounce off the walls makes your paint look completely different. So instead, I recommend choosing a few sample pots of paint colors that you wanna try out. Sample pots are usually around $5 at the paint store, and then painting larger swatches of those samples, either right on your wall or maybe on some poster board or scraps of drywall that you can hang on your wall temporarily. Then take your time and see how the color looks throughout the day. How does it look in the morning, afternoon, evening? How does it look in natural light? How does it look with your lights on at night? And I notice these changes the most when I'm using white paint. White paint can almost all look the same in the home improvement store. And when I take those swatches home, paint big samples on my wall, they look completely different. Often I'll see those blue tones, those yellow tones, those gray tones really vibrantly when I paint those larger swatches at home in natural light. Mistake number three is you're choosing paint colors based on how they look in someone else's home or how they look in someone else's home on the internet in photos that you see. This is similar to mistake number two. Just because the paint looks good somewhere else doesn't mean that it's gonna look good in your own unique space with your own unique lighting, the size of your room, etc. If there's a specific color that you've seen in another home or in a photo online, I still recommend to purchase a sample of that color and test out a large scale swatch on your own wall. Another thing that makes paint look completely different in your space is the way that your house is facing. I notice this even from room to room in my own home. One paint color in my bedroom, which is north facing, is gonna look completely different than that exact same paint color in my living room, which is south facing. Usually the north facing rooms are rather cold, so they make the paint color feel cooler south facing a bit warmer, they're gonna make the paint color feel warmer. So here is my favorite method, step by step, write this down, pin this, save this, for actually picking a paint color that I love every single time. I create a mood board with Pinterest for inspiration, pinning those pictures that I love. Then I choose possible paint colors based off of the paint color families, so blue, green, pink, white, etc. that I see over and over again in those Pinterest photos. Then I go to the paint store and pick chips within that specific family. So, you know, five different white paints, five different green paints, five different blue paints. And one little extra tip here is choosing a paint chip with actually a little bit of gray or beige in it is probably gonna look a little bit more high-end than a really clear color. I only recommend clear, bright colors without any gray or beige in them for kids' rooms. Then narrow down these colors to three to five of your favorites. You can stare at the paint chips for a little bit and just kind of pick your favorite ones. Then paint three foot by three foot swatches on your wall of those three to five paint colors that you love, or again, on poster board or some scraps of drywall. Monitor how those look over the course of the next few days and then pick your absolute favorite paint from there. Then buy your paint and get to work. I hope you found these tips and tricks helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you have any more tips on how you choose paint for your home. I would love to hear them. As well as paint choosing mistakes, I see a lot of general decor mistakes when people are DIYing their own room makeover. I'm gonna leave a video on that for you to watch next, right up here.